Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we shall be looking at two methods of costing, marginal and absorption, and comparing the two methods. The podcast will try and address a number of questions. First, to explain what the two different methods are and how to calculate costing by each method. Second, how does profit differ for each method and why do we get a difference? Thirdly, how does costing affect decision making? And finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each method? With absorption costing, all the manufacturing costs will be allocated to the product. This means materials, labour and all overheads. Any inventory will be valued at the total manufacturing cost. One problem that you may think of as immediately is that overheads are usually based on estimates since the actual cost is never known until after the production. With marginal costing we do not allocate the fixed overheads to the product. Only the variable manufacturing costs, usually materials and labour, are allocated to the product. Any fixed costs are treated as period costs with inventory being treated as valued at the variable manufacturing cost. Let us consider a worked example at this point. Dustbuster is a product that prevents dust settling on furniture. Materials cost $5 per can and the labour cost is $1 per can. Fixed overhead costs of $25,000 per year and the plant aims to manufacture 50,000 cans per year. We shall see now what the two costing methods give as costs. With marginal costing, we are going to consider only the variable costs associated with manufacturing. We have materials that amount to $5 a can and labour that amounts to a dollar per can. We sum these for the marginal cost to give a cost of $6 per can. The fixed overhead costs are not a part of the calculation for marginal costing. With absorption costs, we have to add in the overheads. We still have our $6 per can. We have overheads of $25,000 for 50,000 cans, which represents 50 cents per can. So our total for absorption costing becomes $6.50 per can. We can see this is a greater cost per can than marginal costing. Here is a second worked example. Barred bicycles make an eco-friendly product using bamboo and carbon fibre. And yes, you can actually make a bicycle frame from bamboo and carbon fibre. Several different materials are used, the prices per bicycle are shown. The labour time for each bicycle is 3.5 hours and the cost per hour is $9. We have overheads of $30,000 per year and it is planned to make 10,000 cycles a year. We will carry out the costing using the two different methods. The total for materials becomes $5 for bamboo plus $7 for carbon fibre plus $2 for rubber and $9 for metal giving a total of $23. For labour we multiply the hours by the cost per hour so 3.5 times 9 gives us $31.50. This gives a total for marginal costing of $54.50 for each bicycle produced. Now for absorption costing. Overheads of $30,000 per year and 10,000 cycles are made each year, giving overheads of $3 per bicycle. We add these to the cost we already calculated for materials and labour. This gives us $54.50 plus $3, which gives an answer of $57.50. Next, we want to consider a comparison of the two methods that look at the profit calculated by each method. We will consider the production of a tablet computer by chip and byte. The material costs are $75 per tablet. Each tablet takes 4 hours to make with labour costs at $12 per hour. The overheads are the factory overheads at $120,000 per year and intended production is 6,000 units per year which will sell at $250 each. We need to know the sales over the period in question. In year 1, sales are 4,500, year 2, they are 7,300, and year 3, the sales are 6,200. Using marginal costing, we have materials at $75, 4 hours of labour at $12 per hour, 
the total for marginal costing is $123 per tablet. The figures for absorption costing will take into account the overheads, which will add a total of $20. That means the total for absorption costing will come to $143 per tablet. Our total sales for absorption costing in year one come to $1,125,000. We multiply $250 by 4,500 units. There is no opening stock. We have produced 6,000 units at a cost of $858,000 and we will have a closing stock valued at $214,500. Our total for cost of sales is then $858,000 less $214,500 which is $643,500. We subtract cost of sales from sales and get a figure for gross profit of $481,500. In year two, the sales amounted to 1,825,000. Now, 7,300 tablets were sold and 6,000 were produced. There were already 1,500 tablets in inventory. The new figure for closing stock is 7,500 less 7,300, which is 200 tablets. The value of the closing inventory is 200 times 143, which is $28,600. Cost of sales, $1,043,900, giving a figure for gross profit of $781,100. In year three, sales are 6,200 units, which leaves nothing for the closing inventory, all units now having been sold. Total sales are $1,550,000 and cost of sales dollars which gives a figure for gross profit of $663,400. Now we consider marginal costing. We know the marginal cost is $123 per tablet. We will also have period costs of $120,000 per year. Gross profit will be equal to sales, less cost of goods sold, less fixed manufacturing costs. In year one, sales are $1,125,000. Cost of sales will be $553,500. That is, the cost of 6,000 less 1,500 units. We must then also subtract $120,000 fixed costs to give a gross profit of 451500 in year one. In year two, sales are $1,825,000 and cost of sales calculated at 897900 and we must also take into account the 120,000 fixed costs again. This gives us a figure for gross profit of $807,100. In year three, we have sales of $1,550,000 and all 6,200 units are sold. The cost of sales is therefore $762,600. Subtract cost of sales and fixed costs and we have a figure for gross profit in year three of $667,400. If we look at the gross profit year by year for each method, we shall see there are differences. In year one, absorption gives a higher figure for gross profit of $30,000. But in year two, marginal costing gives a higher figure by $26,000 in year two. And in year three, marginal costing gives a higher figure by $4,000. Where do these figures come from? In other words, what is giving us the difference? The answer is found by looking at the inventory. In marginal costing, the inventory is valued at $123, whilst in absorption costing, it is $143 per unit. The difference is $20. We take the change in inventory as the 1,500 units and multiply by the difference between the costing methods we get the figure of $30,000, which is the difference in gross profits. We can apply the same calculation in years two and three. The fixed cost in inventory accounts for the difference. The differences in gross profits occur when the inventory levels are changing, since the inventory for absorption costing includes variable costs and the share of fixed costs. The value of inventory for marginal costs only includes the variable costs. This means, in absorption costing, a share of fixed costs will be carried forward and treated as an expense in future periods, whilst for marginal costing all the fixed costs are an expense of the current period. 
There are three possible scenarios and we will look at the profit for each. Production can equal or exceed sales, or sales may exceed production, where there are units in inventory. When production is equal to sales, then there will be no change in inventory. Both methods will give the same figure for profit, since under marginal costing all the overheads are written off for the period. For absorption costing, all the overheads have been written off in the cost of goods sold. When production exceeds sales, there will be inventory left at the end of the period, so the inventory levels rise. Absorption costing will then show a higher profit, since the fixed costs are in each unit of closing stock and are on the balance sheet. They are not expensed in the period. Marginal costing will expense all the fixed costs during the period. When sales exceed production, then the levels in inventory will fall. Absorption costing will now show a lower profit. The fixed costs from the prior period are brought forward in opening stock and so will be included in the current period, meaning fixed costs will include those from units produced in the current period and those from units produced in the prior period. With marginal costing, only the costs of the current period are included. The differences between the two occur because of timing in the charging of fixed costs, but over a long period these will eventually even out. Fixed costs are sunk costs and cannot be avoided. They remain the same, whatever a decision may be. Variable costs are relevant because they can be affected by a decision. Absorption costs may show the full cost of a product, but in the short term they are not always helpful because they include sunk costs. Marginal costs will include only the relevant costs based on production, and so they are considered to be more useful in decision making. There are a number of reasons why marginal costing might be preferred. They exclude the fixed overheads. They remove the effect of inventory change from profit. And they avoid putting overhead cost in inventory. That can be very important if the inventory were not able to be sold. Profit warnings will be more obvious with marginal costing when sales are declining. When inventory increases but sales decline and output is sustained, then marginal costing shows lower profits. That is why it gives an early profit warning. Marginal costing can be used to determine units required for break-even or to make a given profit. To analyze a margin of safety, to decide whether to buy or make goods, and whether to accept special orders. There are some arguments against marginal costing. All prices must cover costs, so product pricing is easier with absorption costing. Using only marginal costing may not help decide if a product is profitable. Absorption costing has all costs attached to products, and in the longer term overheads need to be recovered by sales. Absorption costing also avoids distortion when inventory is increased for seasonal sales. The weaknesses include profits appearing to increase even when sales may be decreasing, and vice versa. That can lead to poor decision making. Financial reporting requires absorption costing, but internal reporting may choose to be in marginal costing. Essentially, for planning and taking decisions, then marginal costing is preferred. But for pricing and inventory valuation, then absorption costing is preferred. This ends our second podcast on costing, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information on Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.